But even even with Davis Mills back, I think the run game is going to be super important uh, tomorrow for both teams. So I wanted to ask you next question, who has the edge in the run game? Obviously, Jerry Crusoe had a great game last week. Austin Jones showed some stuff. Who, who has the edge? Well, so I think that, yeah, so I think that Stanford's Stanford's backfield really sort of showed that it's capable of, you know, when worse comes to worse, just absolutely being able to sort of hammer defensive lines. And the offensive line for Stanford really stepped up and obviously opened up a lot of opportunities for them. I think with Colorado, it's a little bit of a more complicated question just because we saw a phenomenal game out of Jarek Broussard. Colorado's offensive line is a very sort of experienced line. It's probably um, one of our more sort of experienced, uh, you know, sort of, uh, position sets on um, on the CU team overall. There's sort of more returning players, more older players, sort of on the offensive line than there really are sort of on any other in any other sort of area of the field. However, that said, Jared Broussard is playing in his first year. He's not a freshman, but he is playing in his first year of college football due to some injuries and things like that. Um, Sam Neuer has just really been sort of a third string, second string quarterback up until last year. Played safety last year, and then now is back in the quarterback position which, you know, left a lot of sort of Buffs fans wondering what last week was even going to look like. And so it was really sort of a serendipitous surprise, at least on the part of, uh, you know, most Buffs fans to see this kid who was shifted to safety by Mel Tucker to then be able to come back and play quarterback. But we saw that he did a good job and we saw that he was able, as you mentioned earlier, to move his feet really well. Um, I think one of the biggest questions sort of in that is whether um, – uh, Alex Fontenot is able to return. It's looking unlikely, according to Carl Durrell, as of his um, most recent press conference. Um, and whether uh, Levante Chenault, um, the younger brother of LaVisca Chenault, is able to um, work his way into the mix and into the game. Um, but again, he's he's a true freshman, you know, sort of just with a lot of talent, but not a lot of experience, really literally no experience in um, college football uh, as of yet. And so I think that it's a massive, it's sort of a massive question mark with a, you know, some upside for Colorado, but not, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count my chickens in terms of them being able to absolutely be um, sort of the dominant side of the football um, compared to the, you know, the sort of just consistent uh, running, you know, offense that Stanford put on against a really, really talented offensive, uh, ugh, really talented Oregon Ducks team uh, last week. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think Chenault was your co-offensive uh, scout team player. So someone who they like a lot, he's doing things clearly, but just hasn't gotten in the game yet. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Um, but Stanford, yeah, talked so much in the offseason about getting back to the run game because last year it was – they just abandoned it, basically. They averaged around 100, 100 rushing yards per game. This year they are trying to get back to it. They had such a young group of offensive linemen last year. So I think they put on an average of 20 pounds uh, on their offensive line. They talked up that a lot. Impressive stuff. And they, they got the push against Oregon and an Oregon team with a great defensive line. Uh, Thibodeau, really quality player, and they were able to get that push. But, yeah, I, I do think Colorado is going to be able to move the rock still. I don't think rushing defense is Stanford's uh, strength right now. And uh, same thing with uh, Colorado is going to give up some yards, especially Austin Jones, Nathaniel Pete. That's a really good do. And I'm really excited to see what they kind of blossom into. Last year it was Cam Scarlett, this uh, fifth year, getting almost all the carries. This year, Austin Jones, Nathaniel Pete, two sophomores with a lot of talent, a lot of upside. Uh, I asked Pete last week, like what he thought of Jones, his rushing partner. He's like, yeah, this guy can make anyone miss it, it, at all in a phone booth. And then Pete himself has ridiculous speed, went for a 73-yard rush last week. So really exciting on both sides. I think it's going to be a really fun matchup to watch because I think both teams are really going to have to win the run game in order to win this game. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you sort of hit the nail on the head a little bit there. And I think what's, you know, what, what is so interesting is that both of these teams you know, graduated key, um, you know, key, run, like key running backs, um, as you said, with Kem Scarlett, you know, for us – uh, LaVisca Chanel, who sort of you know, played a little bit of a Christian McCaffrey sort of role, um, you know, where he sort of would, you know, play out on the wing and, you know, from the backfield. Um, and Alex Fontenot, who's, you know, been out so far this season, um, he was sort of our other sort of most reliable sort of backfield, uh, backfield runner. And so um, the fact that on both sides uh, there's been this sort of young um, – young backfields that have been having to sort of just grow into playing, you know, 
college, like real college football and being, you know, heavily, not only like playing, but being heavily relied upon because it's not like either team has some slew of uh, really talented uh, uh, wide receivers that they are ready to sort of, you know, throwing the football to. And what's also interesting about it is how, you know, both David Shaw, Carl Durrell, um, are both offensive, more offensive minded coaches than a lot of, um, you know, a lot of other coaches in the league. I mean, last year, Colorado was playing under Mel Tucker, who is known sort of for his defensive mind um, as a former defensive coordinator at Georgia and stuff like that. But now with Carl Durrell, um, you know, sort of at the helm and then having Dan, uh, uh, Darren Cheverini um, playing uh, sort of or sort of working the offensive coordinator for him, who he retained from Mel Tucker's staff. Um, and he's a former CU wide receiver himself. It's really, really interesting to see um, them sort of turn so much, you know, to relying on the run game and realizing that, you know, me and Jason talked a little bit about this, not necessarily playing the uh, most like sort of sexiest form of football, which is, you know, the big 80 yard bombs and stuff like that, but just get doing the work that gets the job done, which is just moving the chains, um, you know, inch by inch, yard by yard, you know, and first down by first down in order to sort of, get the points up that they need. And I think it's really important in terms of what Colorado is doing towards building a, a program like what they had previously, that they were able to keep both of those coordinators. I think that was a huge, huge win uh, for the program. And yeah, uh, you, you've covered all of it. You got it that this game is probably going to come down to the run game. I actually love Stanford's wide receivers. I think it's a great group and uh, coaches have been really high on them. That's what was really expected to carry Stanford this year. I just think if Stanford is able to dominate in the run game like they once were, Davis Mills hasn't had that much time in practice. We know he's been out for most of the week. I think that is going to have an effect just because he hasn't been there getting the reps every single day. I was more worried about the passing game uh, before today when it was announced that Mills was going to come back. Uh, But the run game is really going to carry both teams this game no matter what. And both of these teams are going to want to rely and uh, stop – keeping possession they're not going to want to give the ball up willy-nilly it's it's going to be kind of that kind of football game it's going to be a weird thing with no one in the stadium it's, it's going to be different that's what the pandemic year is all about but i think both of these teams are going to say here we have the football we're going to control the game uh let's play it with in our hands it's interesting because as you as you're you know mentioning how high you are on a lot of the uh stanford receivers it's you know a similar thing goes for a lot of the colorado receivers Katie Nixon, as of uh, Wednesday, was day to day, and you know I think he's Katie. You know, KD is the kind of kid who he's been spending all like he he's he's the he, he's kind of become a little bit the face of Colorado football since Lavisca. Um, you know, since Lavisca left and and Stephen Montez graduated and stuff like that, and um, and for KD to get back should should KD get back in the lineup and then we've got a lot of really really talented younger receivers as well um, that have sort of that we that we've supplemented um, you know to add to our uh, wide receiving core but Sam Neuer first year sort of starting quarterback we don't I I don't you know think that Darren Cheverini Carl Durrell um, really have all the sort of you know, faith in him to be making the most sort of uh, thread the needle sort of passes. In addition to the fact that he, um, you know, that the more conservative they can play and the more that they can hold on to the football, the less the other team can have it. So in the end of the day, I think that what we could see is honestly a similar brand of football as, as you were sort of just describing um, from both sides, you know, both, both Stanford and CU, which just sort of further adds to, um, you know, my suspicion that we could end up with a you know particularly close uh, score at the end of the day. And that's what I really want to get to next, because 